Hi, I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance, and today we're going to bring you a little bit of truth in humor. I think you're going to find this one kind of funny. Um, this, the topic that we're going to debate is the boogaloo. You know, very common throughout, uh, you know, every form of social media, the boogaloo. Now, how does that pertain to our current situation with the pandemic? Um, well, so we decided to put some truth in humor about the boog. Um, and there's a lot of sides to the boog, and it is something that I do take seriously. But most people forget there's multiple sides in this. And most of them are good. Some of them aren't. And then there's this guy. Listen, all you primitive screwheads. This is my boog stick. viewers we're here today with our three interviewees we have Shay communist on our left that's Che okay. <laughs> my apologies Che communist we have uh, a man who prefers to only be called by the name Bud Weiser and his little baby brother Bud Light so today we'll be interviewing about the boogaloo Che what is the boogaloo to you to me, and most of the people like me, who, you know, we really became empowered when uh, the Bolshevik statesman, Bernie Sanders, uh, first ran for president, and uh, then we started really, really gaining some ground in this country with some of the uh, uh, candidates like AOC, I, I prefer to call her Che Guevara, and, uh, you know, Illa Omar, and people like that got elected to office. And uh, with them leading the helm of a socialist revolution in this country, it's only a matter of time before the proletariat rise up and, and, and the minorities and, and, and the underprivileged and uh, discriminated classes rise up and, and overthrow the white male patriarchy uh, and capitalist system in this country that has exploited people for hundreds of years. Capitalism bought your greens. <laughs> Actually, I got these from uh, the Goodwill, and uh, you know they were given to me because I'm low income. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Shay. Um, but what is the boogaloo to you? Well, uh, me and my little brother BL here, we uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna raise some hell and praise down. And do you think the boogaloo will happen? Oh, absolutely! You wouldn't believe what I had to do for this year for piece of toilet paper. Uh, Shay, do you have any comments on on boogaloo happening? Well, we can only hope, because as, as soon as the racist white males in this country rise up and try to do something about the, uh, the, 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 the socialist takeover of the country, which is inevitable, and, and uh, the Soviet model will be instituted here, but it, the sooner they go ahead and do that, and the sooner that, that they do that, we can, we can implement stringent, stringent laws to both disarm them and, uh, I believe, probably uh, get rid of them. I want you to try to take my gun, Timmy Taliban. Hmm. Well, th that'll be fine because I'll, I'll be there with the rest of the Red Guard. And you get shot with the rest of them too. And say, um, do, you, do you think the people who want the Boogaloo um, to happen are an isolated group? Oh, I think that it's a very diverse group spread across the country. I, I think that there are some misguided people who think that the Boogaloo might be for freedom or, or something like that, where, where real freedom comes from conformity. Real freedom comes from everybody sharing equally. You know, and I, I hear all the time that people say, you know, sharing in the misery. Well, that's just not true. I mean, if you had went to the, the socialist paradises of either Cuba in the 60s or, or the Soviet Union or Lithuania uh, or, or Albania, um, you know, there were bread lines, sure, but at least people were getting food and they didn't have to work for it. And for a struggling college student, that's appealing. Not to mention that, but our message is universal with universal income and universal health care. That way everybody gets what they want. You can buy people, I mean, you can recruit people with that very easily. And, and then they will turn on their oppressors, uh, you know, white, heterosexual, straight males, Christians, things like that, people who believe in capitalism, and finally root out the scourges of humanity and we can live in a, a utopia. And I think that that dream is pretty much spread 
uh, you know, throughout the country, although there are some pockets of people who, you know, they cling to these tri-corner hat things and, and stuff from, you know, a few hundred years ago, but, uh, uh, you know, I think that they're, they're pretty minor and uh, should be overcome pretty, pretty much well with ease. And, and let me say this. The, the teachers and so on in, in the colleges and everything who, who have really spurred this, this socialist uh, revolution forward, um, they, can, they can look forward to similar treatment that uh, they received uh, in the same way in China and, uh, um, you know, uh, Cambodia and a few other places. Um, you know, revered as, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the founders of the revolution at first, and then there might be some unpleasantries, but that's only if they're really not pure enough. So it's, you know, it, 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 but I do, I think it's spread pretty evenly across society. I just want to let you know that, you know, all your followers haven't even made it out of their mom's basement yet, so... Well, that's, that's, I, I that's, that's a contingent. Gun gun that's, that's, yeah. that's a contingent. They don't them. got that's, a job. They don't have true. anything. And thanks to but, COVID, uh, they're all locked down. They ain't going well, anywhere. I mean, Video games in your mom's basement do not equate to a gunfight, friend. Well, that's that's absolutely that's true, that. but, uh, you know, a million ninety pound weaklings can overcome a Goliath, so... Okay, um, um, okay bud. Uh, so, do you think Boogaloo is an isolated group among your people? No, uh, I don't believe it is. Me and my brother BL here, we, we think that uh, we think that everybody wants their share of the boog, and unfortunately, there are people who want the boog who are not very good people. Uh, me, uh, us, God-fearing white men uh, who are you know decent, you know tax-paying people uh, who are being robbed by the government every day. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, we're we're decent, hard-working folk, and we don't want nothing more than when the boog kicks off and be left alone, live our own lives peacefully without intrusion or molestation from the government and or these other groups. We would prefer that very much. Unfortunately, uh, my uh, so you're a racist, sir. No, sir, just white against males, socialists. Huh? I just see. against white socialists. White males, huh? See, this man they're would oppressing have you. you. This That's man, what it is. This, this man, man would have you believe. You. This man would have you believe that the boog is just some great, beautiful thing, in which. Everybody comes together and they rally essentially against us because we are somehow the enemy when we are now the mind we, we are soon to be the minority and we want nothing from these people but to be left alone. But he would have you believe that we are some evil perpetrators of, uh, of something terrible. It couldn't be farther from the truth. We just want to be left alone, mind our own business, and I'm going to tell you one more time. You keep talking about how we're racist and whatnot. And it's going to be one less seat on this couch. Okay. Well, all I can say to you, sir, is this. Um, the revolution will succeed. We will have communism in America, and we will rebirth the glorious, the, the glorious past that was. Turn this crap off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to be the anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the Russian anthem now? <laughs> uh, well, let's redirect for a minute. Um... What are your predictions, Shay, uh, that will cause the boogaloo to happen? Oh, I think all the causes are already there. I think that you've had white male empowerment and, uh, and, and capitalism for far too long. Saddling people with debt, having to pay for things that they want. That's just, that's, that's all been coming for a long time. I think it's really reached a fever pitch now. And, uh, you know, with our allies in the education system, you know, the, the UCLA, the University of Communist Liberal Association, I mean, the University of California, they, um, you, you know, they've been pushing this for a long time and they've really, really got the propaganda down with, with the youth of the nation. So I think, I think that we've recruited enough people at this point that it's just inevitable. And I think the triggering events are going to be when, when you have to, when people start, you know, asking them to pay for the things that they've received. Or, or, you know, get in, get involved in that way. I think, I think that, you know, the average young person today just understands that they shouldn't have to pay for the things that they want. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. And so, since that exists, I think it's, uh, I think the trigger's already here. So, so what you about want... you, Bud? Um, what are your predictions for the boot to cause it to happen? Uh, I believe that uh, Chartreuse Brigade here and uh, all his friends are going to roll out into the street. Um, I think that I'm going to have a, uh, an army of uh, glasses, braces, and about 90 pounds uh, running through the streets. Uh, they couldn't handle holding a gun, so I don't know how they're going to handle tear gas. Um, not only that, uh, you know, you would have a nation of scarecrows, starving people who literally would depend on the hands of someone else, and if they went to try to acquire it another way, but it's they for a greater good. You have to break a few omelet or eggs to make an omelet. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. 
And you know, if we've got to get rid of the dead weight in society, you know, the people who, well, you know, like yourself or, or others, you know, these, these right wing, you know, people, then, then, you know, so be it. Because then we can finally have a decent society where everybody's equal and everybody has their fair share of everything. So, so let me ask you a question. And uh, we care about the planet. Let, let me ask you a question, my Viet Cong friend. Uh, so, Ho Chi Minh was a great man. Uh, let me ask you a question once again, Viet Cong friend. Um, so you're saying that you would have people live like they do in California, I mean California, uh, the People's Republic over there. Um, you would have me believe that uh, the homelessness in the streets, the needles everywhere, people defecating in the streets, largest homeless society in the United States. You would mean to tell me that that is the greater good. Well, the problem is, is the capitalists that are still over there, they're screwing things up. That's why there's homeless. I mean, look, we could have orderly bread lines and camps with comfortable beds for these people. If only you capitalists would get so, out of the way. So the internment camps for the Jews and the Japanese. Well, I didn't say internment camps, just places of involuntary like residency an that, camp. That, that maybe, you know, and they're only for a few people. I mean, but they're not for you. They're not for you, okay? Join our cause because those camps aren't for you. So, They're just for the bad people. So, Shay, you, do you believe that Bernie's going to be elected? Well, we can only hope. Um, you know, and if he would pick Alexandria Casia cortez uh, as his uh, vice president, I think we'd really be into something. But I'll tell you the truth. I like to think that perhaps people will come to their senses and with the inevitability of communism, that they'll simply write in AOC as the president and she'll take Bernie as her vice president, and then we'll truly have a utopia. I mean, with the Green New Deal and, and, and getting rid of everything, uh, you know, that, that, that's associated with capitalism or what people think is normal, I mean, how, how can we lose? So, Bud, how did you feel about standing in lines to get toilet paper this morning? Uh, I didn't care for it too much. Uh, there was a fellow who uh, smelled like he could have done with a bath and uh, looked like he could have used a brush or a, a toothbrush. And uh, he, uh, he tried so to assault my brother. Away. See, See, we'd give those away. Yeah, okay, with one strand of bristles on the toothbrush. It's That's a toothbrush, all the state could afford, sure. No, uh, somebody tried to get my little brother BL over this, and uh, we, you know, we had to handle business. That's not important, but uh, you know, uh, I do just want to say uh, it, your country sucks when your choices for president are either Statler or Waldorf from you know the Muppets. I just want you to know that that sucks. Okay, well, when they take when they take power and they've got a life expectancy of ten years and they say they have a plan. What's your plan? Don't die. <laughs> Like, you know, I, I don't understand. Well, there's, I mean, some, there's some age restrictions with Bernie, and Biden, of course, would be a second choice because, I mean, let's, let's face it, I mean, even I'll admit that he was, he's just going to be a figurehead for, you know, well, it doesn't really matter. But the, the, the point is, is, yeah, you know, I'll concede some ground to you on that, but, uh, you yeah, know, it's just time for the oppression of the proletariat to stop, and sooner or later, you know, everyone from inside the inner cities and ghettos and stuff where they're going to rise up and they're going to join the fight, and uh, the red banner is going to flow through the streets, yeah. They're going to rise up. These people don't even have money for a hotel room. How are they going to buy a gun and rise up? Are you going to provide that for them, too? You do understand that costs money, right? Well, you can. Well, you see, there you go again with that money thing. And, and it's a real simple thing. I mean, insurgents for, for many, many decades have understood that your oppressor has all the means that you need for a rebellion. So you simply take them from him. You know, uh, uh, you know, a few dead people here, a few armories there. I mean, and you've got what you need. So I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's been done. So let me, so let me just, let, let me just ask you. Not to mention, we have friends around the world, you know, that are in the banking industry and some other things that, uh, you know, they'll fun funnel some money in through some foreign countries to make sure we get weapons shipped. Yeah, after I wonder, the, I wonder when, it really I wonder when that started. <laughs> 1913. Anyway, so uh, my my question is this: um, so you mean to arm your people? Your populace, your regime, so to speak. You I see, believe you people are comfortable you're claiming, with that word. You're claiming, you're claiming authoritarianism again, right there. You know this capitalist ownership thing. I, they're not my people. They're just people who follow in the cause. It's the ant society. You don't move up. You move in. So let's re redirect for a minute. Um, but what do you think it's going to take to uh, start Boogaloo in our country? Well, I mean, all for me it would really take is to see, uh, you know, Johnny Taliban over here at my front door, and that's about all it would take. Uh, these people are these people are closing in every day, and nobody ever sees it. And uh, I had, uh, yeah, I had one of your hey, scarecrows try to attack me for toilet paper this morning. I, 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 I got to tell out you, well buddy. I got to tell you, buddy. We're on the streets now. We're not in the shadows anymore. That was the '60s with the weather underground and stuff blowing up police stations and whatnot. But now, now we're mainstream, pal. We got people in Congress. We got money flowing. We're out there. We own the universities. We own everything. We're indoctrinating your kids. I mean, it's just a short term before your kids are turning you into the uh, well. Yeah, oh, you mean the, the red part of China? Yeah. Well, let's ask 
uh, Bud Light here. Uh, do you feel like you've been indoctrinated for socialism? Yes. <laughs> Are you going to uh, help your brother uh, fight the Boogaloo? Yes. All right. So, then how have you been indoctrinated to socialism? Don't talk to him. Oh, okay. Sit down. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's read it. I understand. I understand. Um, Give me the children when they're six, and and, and 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 I'll make you a new society. So you're saying that they were done so in our schools? Well, that's been our whole mission for years. I mean, we've been massively successful, and the American people have just been too damn dumb to know it. I mean, we we we've, we've spread out. I mean, we're everywhere. The tentacles are into everything. So, I mean, I don't see how we can lose. If anybody has a question about what he's talking about, I highly encourage you look up the Khmer Rouge or the Red Guard in China. I highly, I highly recommend that you. Those are isolated it. examples of brutality that were widely overblown. Most of those killings didn't probably. But that also helped all those powers rise to a prominent social, social as far as uh, communist status. Well, of course, again, you gotta break a few eggs to make the omelet. But I mean, you know, you what mean I mean? millions look, of people. You know, the international, a is not the international a press was was hostile to socialism and communism for years. So they overblew, you know, the amount of the killings so the or mass in China or and Cambodia, those, those are the well, few Well, I mean, that's a few things. Gentlemen, I mean, gentlemen, you know. I think for a moment we need to take just a commercial break and we'll be right back. People, I have to tell you, I got the camera for a second. It's time to rise up. Fight. Don't let these people take you down the capitalist hellhole. Rise up. Shoot them all. Make sure that you fight. Make sure that you fight. Don't, don't stop. They're trying to take the camera. Get away! Welcome back, viewers. Now that we've reacquired the camera from our uh, communist friend over here. Power to the people. Garbage. I think Garbage. we can uh, continue our interview today on the Boogaloo and if it's coming <laughs> soon to America. So, um, Bud, let's ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you think uh, is going to cause the Boogaloo to kick off? Um, I would think that it would be... Uh... It would be Dumpster Diver over here, uh, and about 50 of his friends, who are unwashed, uh, crawled from one mother's basement, and uh, taken just to the streets. Just hold it for a second. I'm just not touching it. that just piece of garbage. Get that shit in my face. <laughs> no, um, I, I honestly do believe that it will be because these, uh, you know, these Muppet characters will uh, be running through the streets, causing all kinds of havoc and whatnot. And uh, I believe that us good, God-fearing people will have to defend ourselves because their depravity will know no bounds. In no time at, ever, at all, in any the time. The ends justify the means. At no time in communist history has there ever been anything peaceful to attain socialism. And Only you know because that. of resistance like you. Only because good, God-fearing so, people so Shay, decided to take a stand. Shay, what, what, what do you say about the 65 million people killed by communism in you know, China? Let's hear about that, shall we? Come 30 or 40 million in Russia. And well, I think that those numbers are, are largely overblown. And even if they're not, think of all the accomplishments that, that, that were garnered. And most of those people were nothing more than enemies of the state, enemies of the people, people that the system deemed by their laws to be bad people. Innocent people. What accomplishments um, are you referring to? Oh, the first, uh, uh, the 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 first um, satellite in orbit. Soviet little Union achieved that. Little, he Sputnik. little hesitation. You're, you're referring to Sputnik. Sputnik, yes. Um, and you do realize it wasn't very long after that that we had our own in space, yes? Well, it doesn't matter. First, there, you know, and that was accomplished under communism. So there's an accomplishment, and I say, just like everybody else who supports my cause. If you've got to kill 60 or 90 million people to get a satellite in orbit, why not? I mean, you're talking about a leap forward here. I mean, you know, it's everybody with this small thinking. You know, everybody's concerned with, you know, themselves or the individual. I mean, you've got to look at the big picture, people. I mean, we're talking about the planet. We're talking about humans as a whole. We're talking about a, a, a system that would support everybody. And you know what? If it, people say, oh, there'll be shortages, well, you know what? If you get rid of a couple of hundred million people, there won't be any shortages. And what do you have to say to that, bud? I have to say this. The greater good for socialism is never for the greater good of people. It is only for the greater good of an idea. And ideas are dangerous. Well, the state drives humanity. The state put, goes down the road. It takes us in the direction. So the state should have that authority to go in that direction and, uh, and take people with them. You're absolutely right. And, you know, the communist state also had, you know, a great achievement also. The first candle lit after electricity. 
that's quite something. I got to give you all that. That's quite engineering. Yeah, that, yeah, that you know, happened. It was only used for happened. thousands of years, you know, before uh, you know we put electricity. Well, in that's here. true. That, that yeah, I, I give you that. Yeah. I'll give you that. But that was because of the disruption, because people were fighting back and, and not wanting to just go with the program. I mean, good grief, people! Drink the Kool Aid. Let's get this thing done right, for our, for future generations. So, but why do you think people resist socialism? I think because they see that uh, their needs what they believe, their cultures, their values, and what they hold dear, even their families, are no longer priority. They are means to an end. If you cannot help them achieve their twisted hive mind fantasy, you are killed. I know that this man here would have you believe that those were all enemies of the state, they were all terrible people. Those were innocent people who did nothing wrong other than see the fact that this was twisted, it was demented, they had no idea and want or desire to support it, and they killed them in cold blood. Now look, I admit that there might have been a little bit of failure to plan up front, you know, in failure China and in the Soviet Union, a few other places, and even in Cuba. Uh, Goche. And, um, you know, th there were a few failures to plan, but here's the thing. You're talking about, you know, just like in this country. The government says this class of people can't do this or do that, and then if they break that law, they're locked up. Well, it's no different. You know, I'll remind you, you know, even though this is not my guy, but, uh, you know, in Germany in the 1930s, nobody ever broke a law. All the way through the 40s, nobody broke a law. The law said that it was perfectly fine. You guys are always talking about law and order, following the law. Always talking about the enforcer being the good guy, you know, the police and so on. Well. If we apply that to any other country, well, these laws were made through whatever due process they had, and then they were expected to be followed, and those people who didn't, well, they were just criminals. That's how it's supposed to be, the way we, we think. So, I mean, really, it's a short jump. It's not a short jump. This country was established not by the laws of man, but the laws of God, mm -hmm. and it was that way for the longest time. That is why this disgusting, filthy, vile thing that you call socialism did not have a chance to take root anywhere. It's because people saw it for what it was. Well, you know, I would it was only the you. desires of man trying to trump the desires of God. And God can run society just fine without, well, people like you. Well, I'm not going to get into a, a theological or a supernatural debate with you. I'm just going to I'm just going to stick with people don't uh, believe in facts, God, that's you know. And, and um, you yeah, know, I'm just going to stick with the facts of the matter. And the facts of the matter are this. You know, uh, Americans are already pretty well tuned to uh, to to go along with this program. Uh, you know, uh, 1938 they made the Gun Control Act. They said uh, you got to register, you know, uh, machine guns and stuff. And then 1986 they took them away from you, um, and people went along with it, which is a uh, you know that that shows that uh, they're they're kind of getting primed for a takeover. And then in '94 you guys had the uh, Crime Control Act, and uh, it prohibited a lot more things, and people went along with that without a big to do. And Americans are perfectly willing these days to look at their neighbors and say, well, the government said he was a bad guy, so I'm going to turn him in. So, I mean, really, you're kind of primed for it. You act as if people have made this, you know, notion on their own. It is because people We might have helped him like a little. You. We might have helped him down that road people a little like bit. You. But only for the greater good. Once again, the greater good of a man's idea, not God's will. Oh, it's the, it's the idea of mankind. I think what I am worried about as an interviewer here is that... There's lots of people in this country who are on board with Shay's ideas and want to institute it in our country. So, Bud, do, Go you red. Think, do you think there's enough of your people who can overcome this, and what would it take to overcome? Maybe. Do we need Trump reelected to do that? Do they need Congress? Well, uh, given uh, given Trump's uh, you know tax breaks uh, that everybody has discovered here uh, this uh, this past week, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Uh, I leave it up to the individual. You need to wake up. This has become a nation of sheeple. You have to understand, the Founding Fathers, their taxes were increased by 3% and they shot people over it. Now, the problem is this, is that you, this man here, um, he and his friends, and many like him, have done a slow placating, we will give you this if you let us have this. And it's been a slow infringement of the government. It's been and, working too. Unfortunately. And so it becomes this... We'll tolerate this because we know that something is going to be giving, given to us in exchange for this. Something that we value that we think is more important. Um, I do believe that there is enough of us like-minded, decent people. The problem is, though, is that nobody is willing to understand now is the time for you to say no. 
because eventually one day there's going to come a time where you will say no and you're already behind the chain link fence under guard by machine gun. So, uh, and Good times. In, in case you think that that's not the case, I, I highly encourage you to look up, you know, the history of communism in, you know, Cuba, Cambodia, Vietnam, China, Russia. I, I highly suggest that you look at those because everybody at some point decided, oh, now's the time. And it was far too late. I would, I would encourage you to look up the history of communism written by Mao Zedong, and I'm going to tell you it's just enlightening. So how many do we need to resist communism being instituted in this country? Takes about, takes about three to five percent active, about twenty percent passive. Now what that means is three to five percent uh, trigger pulling, uh, what the government would call uh, domestic terrorist activities, of which me and my brother BL are not. We're just good, God-fearing people who want to be left alone. Um, that's what that would take as far as uh, frontline people. Now, 20% passive would be uh, people offering aid, medical supplies, money, uh, shelter uh, from the Schutzstaffel. But I'm not sure uh, your people. I'm not sure taking people active support or not taking an active. Yeah, support. no, they they wouldn't be. Uh, I'm sure uh, my friend here is quite, uh, you know, See, educated. We, we, we've been we've been using that model for a long time. I mean, you know, uh, you know, Cambodia, um, you know, places like that. Uh, we managed to get her done in, uh, uh, you know, Rwanda, uh, Zimbabwe, a few other places. Uh, uh, Mozambique, uh, you know, a couple other places. About 3% of the population were willing to, uh, you know, uh, death to capitalism and, um, you know, pull some triggers and uh, break a few eggs. And uh, then you just got to get about 20% that are willing to fund them, aid them, that they won't inform on them to the government. And boy, you're pretty much set. Any culture, anywhere, it really works. I mean, you know, we've got a long history with it. You do know. You guys that. actually do too. We got it from you. It happened in the American Revolution. So thanks for that one. Got to, got to, got to say that. You do but, know that's a two-way street, friend. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But that's why we're busily, you know, in those, uh, you know, the halls of Congress, the Senate, the school system from, you know, K through 12, and uh, all, and in the colleges, because we own them. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're busily making sure that the numbers can't go your way because we're just recruiting the, the whole country. What you know, will from, you from, do from, if the Boogaloo comes for you? Well, um... I'm hoping to start the boogaloo, so uh, you know we'll, well, we'll then see. I'll watch you drive. I just oh well, Back okay. Wow, see violence, side. white male oppression at its best. All right, well I think we need to wrap up our interview here. Uh, but do you have any advice for our viewers? Yes. If they come to your door and their policy is just a little red, probably just close your door. These people don't want anything from you except your life. That is what they ask for. They ask for you to submit all of your freedom, submit all of your money, submit all of your time, submit all of your labor. They ask that you become a prisoner, a slave for the greater good of the state because you are nothing more than a strong back and strong hands to make their dreams come true so that they may live a lavish life while you toil away in misery until you die. You'll get that is the fact of the fruits of your labor. Share the fruits of your labor. Apportioned. Yes, we'll share in the starvation, we'll share in the death, we'll share in the murder, and we'll share in the cold-blooded murder of the innocent because I do believe that uh, it was y'all, uh, I do believe in Russia, the first uh, legal abortion was ever uh, yeah, somewhere around there, I think. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it's been a real powerful tool for us here in the West. Um, you know, you guys keep killing yourselves off and everything uh, from birth, so you got to shrink the numbers down a little bit, make it easier for some of our allies in the Middle East and a few other places that really support us, you know, to uh, have a real foothold when we get here and start taking over the population. Yes. Just so uh, you're dem aware. Demographic replacement, really. Um, so that you're outnumbered by people who feel more like us. And with our educational system converting your children, it's short order. Cut that crap out. Listen, okay, <laughs> that's garbage. And I'll tell you why. China and Russia have still not recovered and they're never going to recover from the amount of abortions that they've done. The Russians are still having seven abortions for every 10 live births. Oh, that's they are true. killing themselves off. Th that's absolutely true. They are not true. going to recover I mean, from, a, from the horrors of socialism. There's a, there's a genetic and, bubble created. And neither will no China. Because of China's birth policies, they have more men than they have women. They have genetically bottlenecked themselves. They will not uprise. They won't. So I ask you to take that into account whenever you think that, you know, abortion is somehow some great thing. It's not just the un it's not just, you know, the cruel and wicked murder of the innocent and the unborn. It's also a way to genetically bottleneck people because then you do not create any more people. You do not create life. 
Well, I would say to that that, uh, you know, saddling somebody with choices, I mean, because let's face it, I mean, consequences, you know, that's, that's really a very Western thing consequences for the choices that you make. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody you wants You mean that. taking responsibility for your actions? No, no, that's not really what I mean. I mean, you know, but you're saddling people with unreasonable choices. I mean, why not? You know, why not? Why couldn't they do that? And besides, if they have the abortion, they can go back to work a lot sooner producing for the state. So, I mean, it's, it's just better. Now, now, sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes, you know, when the state needs a lot of people, I mean, breeding programs would be a good idea. You know, but, uh, but for the most part, you know, uh, especially here in the West, I mean, you know, we really fixated on the abortion industry so that, uh, you know, you guys would knock your population down. And then our, like I said, our African, Middle Eastern and, and, and other colleagues there, you know, our brothers in arms, our comrades uh, would filter here through immigration and uh, pretty much outnumber you. And they'd have uh, very similar ideas to mine and find uh, fertile breeding ground, you know, uh, all throughout the country. And eventually they simply outvote you and we wouldn't have to pull a trigger. Now it's working do something fine. about it now. Everybody's pro-choice is alive. I would say that's true. I, I've never Everybody's gotten a vote from somebody who was aborted. Born. Yes, very good statement from Bud Light over here. Um, Bud Weiser, would you, uh, if you had one thing you could say to the American people, what would it be? I think that I would say it is time. We have put up with this for too long. How long and how far do you really think the cliff is? How far away? Because I can tell you, my friends, we are running out of rope. See, you and I share a lot of, a lot of common ground on that. Because I think the exact same thing. That capitalist cliff is just right there. And, and you should rise up and follow AOC through the streets. Let the blood flow. Make the, make the capitalist dogs pay for their crimes. At some point... At some point, we have to decide that we can no longer do this. At some point. Because someday soon, very soon, your kids will have kids. And this future that this man is talking about is not any future that I want my children living in. I, I do have to point out that, and I, I've enjoyed this conversation a great deal, but I have some meetings in New York and a couple in, uh, yeah, well, you know, a few other places, Azerbaijan and a few other places that I have to get to, so I don't know if we could roll along here for a minute. Well, I think that's going to wrap up our interview today. Um, I think we've covered both the pros and cons of socialism and capitalism. Mostly pros. Mostly cons. And I hope our American viewers today will take to heart what has been said and chew it over and think about it so maybe we can come out with a good outcome. Thank you for watching. Revolution! All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit long. I'm sure you saw me in a totally different light uh, in this one. And But there is truth in humor, okay? And so a lot of what we were laying out there, you could call it, cleverly camouflaged advice or truth, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's humor, and it's meant to be taken that way with, like I said, some illuminating truth hidden inside of it. So really think about it as more than just a joke. Anyway, uh, what are you going to do when the boogaloo comes for you? I'm Mike with the School of Self-Reliance. Thanks for watching. Listen, all you primitive screwheads. This is my boomstick. I said boomstick.